Welcome into what is a very intimate edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Stevie Nichol. <laughs> what a treat, Stevie. Can I move further away? No, no. It's a nice bonding way, isn't it, over the next hour. Oh, we'll kick things off in Las Vegas. AC Milan taking on Barcelona in a pre-season friendly. Barcelona, who win by one goal to nil. Oh, look at this cast of characters that we're going to invite in to add their two pennies to the conversation. Alex Kirkland's here, as is Luis Garcia and Frank Leboeuf. Uh, Luis, let's start with you. Obviously, the big talking point from this game has got to be Ansu Fati on the score sheet. A man who came in, took Lionel Messi's shirt, but has no way lived up to expectations. Injuries being a part of that. But also, you just feel that he hasn't quite taken that next step that we were expecting. Yes, Dan. Yes, guys. Good to see you all. Yeah, we were expecting a lot from Mansu Fati after seeing him when he was only 18, uh, arriving and introducing himself into the first team, showing that uh, the ability, that 1v1, that uh, uh, smell for goals near the box, always very dangerous. But I think that everybody was expecting to become the next Lionel Messi. And that's very difficult. That's a lot of pressure that they put under the back of this young lad. I think that after that, uh, the feeling of uh, injuries, then not getting the rhythm of the competition, signing new players, all the trouble with different managers arriving, no good results, a lot of players in injuries, so not having the strong squad, I think that didn't help it to improve all the below the way that it was expecting. But at the moment, it looks sharp. Uh, it looks like we saw him two, three years ago. So I'm expecting good things for Ansu Fati this season if he reminds in Barcelona, because as you know, Everything is on the edge and we don't know who's going to stay or who's going to leave. Luis is in party mode, Stevie. You think so? You know why? Tell me. The Ibiza earrings are in. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I must have forgot. Forgot to tell you how much. Forgot to tell you how much. No, leave them in, mate. I love them. Alex, I think you should get a pair as well. They'd suit you. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'll bet that in mind for next time. Uh, Alex, where do we stand on Ansu Fati and the patience that Barcelona fans have? It's interesting, you've always got to check his age, and he's still only 20. Because he came on the scene so early on, you kind of think he's a lot older, but still 20 years old, a lot of potential there. Yeah, and it's when you see him score goals like this that you are reminded of that potential. I think that's why Barca, the club, and a lot of fans as well still haven't given up on him and still haven't given up on him becoming the player that we all kind of hoped and thought that he might become when he first burst onto the scene. But in terms of Barca, the club, like, let's be clear, this is a player who they would have been quite happy, I think, to, to see move on this summer, certainly if they'd have gotten a, a decent offer for him. But it was the player himself, Ansu Fati, who didn't want to move. You know, he said it and his agent, uh, George Mendes, said it as well. He wanted to stay at Barcelona. He still thinks that he can kind of become a, a first-team regular there. He's always been capable of, of scoring goals like this. We saw him score a few goals right at the end of last season as well. I think the question mark after all those really serious injuries that he suffered is something that Luis mentioned in terms of the one-on-ones taking players on that kind of burst of speed and acceleration, that kind of dynamism that he brought to the team when he first came in. Does he still have that? I think that's the, that's the big doubt. Um, he may well have a role to play this season, especially if some other players who are competing for positions in that front three or front two do move on, as it looks like in the case of Dembele, for example, he's going to. It must be weird, Stevie. You know? You're as a youngster, you just go on and play. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't know anywhere, any way else of playing. And then you pick up some injuries. Yeah. Then there's a little bit of criticism. Is it just a case of you just start to think too much? Well, I would, I would be interested to know his relationship with Xavi. Right. Because on the face of it, you know, you look at the games he had last year, that's an impressive amount. But the truth is, he never really saw the field in proper games, big games. Yeah. You know, the, the Madrid derby or, or the Champions League or the Europa League final. I mean, he, he never got in when it really mattered. And so I guess if I was him, the one thing I'd be thinking about is, yes, I understand I've got plenty of years ahead of me, but do I have a future with the manager? because it doesn't seem as though Xavi trusts him. And it takes an awful lot for a manager to go from a guy that you don't trust mm. to all of a sudden giving a run of games. He's always going to get the odd game, as we saw from the stats from last year. But for a football player and, and for a guy where probably he thinks the potential and where he thinks he should be, 
I don't know whether that's going to be enough. I, he might have to go somewhere else. Well, one man who looks like he's definitely going somewhere else is uh, Usman Dembele. Uh, Xavi spoke about his uh, future after the game. This is, this is what he had to say. Of course, Dembele heavily linked to a move to PSG. And he said, um, I'm a little disappointed. He's told us that he wants to go to PSG. We tried to keep him. But there's nothing we can do. He told me he's already spoken to Luis Enrique and President Nasser al Khalafi. There was no way to convince him that this is the final decision and it's his personal decision. PSG have made an offer that is completely out of the market. We cannot compete with it. Frank LeBeuf, you've spoken a lot about Dembele. This seems to be done now. Yes, it seems to be done and uh, hopefully for the best. Uh, we can all be concerned because we all know Usman Dembele and again and again we all say, you know, that he's a, an unplayable player when he's at his best. But the prime with the, the inconsistency that he showed during his career uh, is a real question mark you know, uh, to see if he's going to be good for Paris Saint-Germain or not, or good enough or going to play enough for Paris Saint-Germain to make sure that he's going to serve the club well. That's the big question. I can understand Xavi being disappointed, but I always say that if a player doesn't want to stay, you see something you cannot uh, do about and, uh, and you have to let him go. Um, the, the, the only question mark that I have, what we're going to see with Suspan Dembele in Paris Saint-Germain? Which position is going to play? And will he be consistent enough to, uh, to, 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 to make the fans very happy? You don't have to defend him anymore, Luis. <laughs> finally, finally, Ali and myself are not going to have any more fights, so that's something <laughs> good. But definitely, I have to tell you, I'm I'm a little bit disappointed after what happened with Neymar back uh, on the days where I was expecting him to stay because I have that romantic uh, view of, uh, about football and about Barcelona. I realized that I, I cannot expect that for everybody, but I had. That, up, uh, that in my mind, yeah, I think that the Dembele, after what happened for the first three years at Barcelona, couldn't um, show his potential because of the injury, because different situation. I was expecting him to stay, definitely to show that he wanted to be successful in Barcelona. But once again, um, I'm, I, I get this surprise when I woke up and read that he wants to leave, that he already spoke with the Paris Saint-Germain and made that decision. Definitely, I think he's a very big blow for Barcelona. I think he's a very important player on Xavi's plans for the future. They need to reorganize once again because after what we saw about the Belay last year, you could see that he's a big, big key player for Barcelona and he's not going to be any more there. So we'll see how they do it. They, I heard about Cancelo, I had about different players, but definitely Dembele is going to be missed very much. Bernardo Silva to replace him, Alex? I mean, he's a name who's been linked to Barca for a long time. We know that, that Xavi likes him a lot. I'm not sure if they'll replace Dembele directly. I think this is one of the, even though he's a fantastic player, also a frustrating player, but a fantastic player at times. I think this is a position that they could afford to, to lose someone. You've got Rafinha plays in exactly the same position. They've had a lot of money for him last year. You've got uh, Ferran Torres, you've got Ansu Fati, especially if, if Xavi's going to play four in midfield and two up front with one player off Lewandowski. You've got options there in Rafinha and with Ansu Fati, potentially Gavi playing in a more forward role as well. Sure, Bernardo Silva is, is absolutely outstanding. If Barca could make that happen, it would be a terrific signing, I think, for, uh, for them. And he might well be keen to, to come. But the problem that Barcelona have got right now, it's very simple. You know, forget additional players coming in. As it stands, they cannot register the new signings they've already made or indeed the, the players whose, whose contracts they've renewed over the last few months because they've got this uh, financial shortfall. They're trying to plug it by doing some more deals just like they did last summer. They aren't there yet. And the, the reality of Barca's situation right now, less than two weeks before the La Liga season starts, is they've only got 13 players registered with La Liga. And oh, one of them is Dembele, no. who's off. So oh, Alex, here we go again. Team, we can't be doing know, all this again. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But that is the situation for, for Barca. So, like I say, Bernardo Silva, great. But let's, let's get real. First of all, they've got to sort out their finances to be in a position to register Gundogan and Romeo, these players that they've already brought in this summer, Enio Martinez as, as well. And, and they haven't done that yet. So, they've got really serious work to do before they can look at bringing in an outstanding player like Bernardo Silva.
Oh, no, what about the rest of my rundown here? I just got to ask you about Joe Cancelo moving, and you'll say, well, yeah, he could move, but they can't register him. Well, um, what I will say is that, of course, Dembele going helps them because Dembele is on right. significant wages. So Dembele going and bringing in some money for, for Dembele, however that split works out, we've heard about this fee and being split between the player and his agents and Barca. But once that happens, plus getting the wages on that books, it's not enough on it by itself but that will help potentially for sure. Uh, so let, let's, let's talk about Cancelo. How keen are Barcelona to get him, Alex? How much do they need him? Well, Xavi uh, loves him and Xavi has been saying right the way through the summer that right back is a position that, that he wants to see strengthened because he hasn't really been happy with any of his options at uh, right back, um, including Serginio Dest, who in fact was, was left off uh, when Xavi listed options at right back the other day. Didn't even oh. mention Dest. Um, unfortunately for, for, for him, which doesn't bode well. But um, Xavi likes Cancelo a lot. But again, it's a question of even if it's a loan move for Cancelo, it would be a, a, an expensive loan fee for, for the season and serious wages as well. So can they do it? I hate to say it. Can they do it financially? And how much would the player be willing to drop, I guess, those wage demands to, to try and make that move happen? Uh, how excited were you to see Cancelo in a Barcelona shirt, Louise? Actually, very much. He's a player who not only uh, can play as a fullback, he can play as a different position because Xavi likes the, the fullbacks to go forward, to get in the middle. We see what, how Cancelo uh, can adapt to a midfield role. So if that's something that likes. He's very good uh, with his uh, feet, so he can go forward, allow uh, Rafinha, the player uh, on the wide side, to, to get inside. And he making the overlap. So I think he's a player who can adapt very well to the Barcelona system because he's kind of that feeling. We saw him play uh, for Manchester City and he perfectly adapts. So I would love to, to see and much more because Barcelona definitely need to free Araujo and Kunde and allow them to play as a centre back. So I, I, I would love to see him on the, on the Barcelona shirt. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.